to talk about next is the idea of um, how, how do you listen from within and know what to listen to. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the confusing things for many people as they start to listen within, that a lot of times there's all these voices going on or all this noise and all this stuff happening. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you both have talked about the idea of kind of paying attention to inside and something was happening inside and you, and you you knew it was speaking to you, but you didn't really know it was saying it was saying to you, or you didn't know how to interpret the messages, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So how how did you navigate, you know, the process of n knowing how to listen and what to listen to, in order to like have the guidance, have the right guidance to move forward? That's that for me. That's an excellent question because it's a it's a very difficult question, mm -hmm. and it's one that um, I get from my clients all the time, how do we know? And um, as I as I listen to you and, and obviously have gone through the things that I've gone through, um, I've had to really get real tight with that question. Mm -hmm. And um, here's what it is for me. Because I had such a uh, discomfort with feelings of anxiety, it was very, very hard to listen. Mm -hmm. Because the anxiety was so dominant, it was so powerful, um, I had to find a way to be able to, you know, be, let it be what it was going to be, but then also hear something else. Mm -hmm. And the, the things for me um, actually came from um, some of the videos I've watched that you've, you've shared with us that have been so helpful for me. Um, from the readings that I've done, uh, some of the other people that I admire out, out there that who are writing beautiful things and speaking and all. And it was one of the biggest uh, things was I had to keep asking myself over and over, is what you're doing betraying yourself or is it helping yourself? And then rather than the anxiety experience that was more centered in say the, the abdominal area, the belly area, mm -hmm. when I would ask myself those questions, yes, the anxiety would still be there, but I would feel something in my heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there was one there was one key that was really big for me was mm -hmm. to know the questions that would that would really work for me so that I could get a heartfelt feeling mm -hmm. that would be be stronger or at least be enough to to override temporarily the anxiety feeling that was in the belly, the abdominal area. And then the other part came to mind when Coco was speaking was um, because I am so fully believing in this whole mind-body-spirit mind, connection, I watched my body become more and more depleted. Mm -hmm. I, watched, I watched my energy level drop so severely. Days became such an effort to get myself out into doing things that I actually loved. I loved my practice. I had a, a wonderful practice and wonderful clients that I loved to experience. And yet I was still, my energy level was so depleted, as you, as you said, so, so key. And my, my body was actually shrinking down and whittling away. And that was the other piece that really helped me. So it really was a mind, body, spirit experience to help me understand time for change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. I'm glad you touched on the, the physical aspect of it because I know when I'm working with clients, I, I do that a lot. It's one of the areas that I feel like we we haven't explored really well or or even just the, the kind of mental health system within which I worked years ago didn't really navigate well and didn't help clients pursue well, which is your being, your physical being, actually will give you great messages, but you have to learn how to get in there and you know now be willing to listen and be willing to be with the other, the discomfort for a while because as you say the anxiety if you have a chronic anxiety going on that's so uncomfortable and sometimes the urge to escape is so predominant that oh, yeah. you don't want to go back in there and say Ugh. so yeah that that great great um, great encouragement for people to uh, use the heart area and the upper area in tandem with the lower area and, and to start to. To, to discern yes. what the messages are and where they're coming from in the body. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Mm, for sure. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about your messages and your your 
Yeah, you know, what, what were you listening to? What was going on for you in that part yeah. of the journey? Yeah. Well, I will tell you, um, one of the things that helped me, and it was at least the beginning piece in, in helping me gain clarity, was I began a yoga practice. Mm -hmm. And with yoga came meditation and a deeper spiritual journey. Um, and from that, um, it really helped me with listening and hearing and clarity. Um, other parts of that is I became, so I became more free, had more energy. Um, I became more in tune with, in, with nature also. I would have to take lots of nature, you know, walks. Um, and so I began to really feel things and, and hear things. Um, and I started paying attention. And then through, you know, many really conversations with you, again, reading, um, discerning. Is that my heart? Is that my ego? Mm -hmm. Who's talking to me? Mm -hmm. What's the message? Where is it coming from? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you do learn. You kind of, you go like, oh, I knew who that is. Yeah. That's not my heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and so no matter what I, well, I shouldn't say no matter what, but more often what I was really feeling was this energy, in physically as well as inside, of movement. Mm. Really one of movement okay. and, and, and moving. Uh, and I just began to, to really trust that. Mm. that. And when I was in my home, the place that I was living, um, I would physically be there. And I would be like, gee, how am I feeling? How does it feel to be here? And I didn't feel connected. I didn't feel really connected. Um, and as I was listening and paying closer attention to some of the things I was feeling, I began to really think about connections and relationships. I actually went through my mind and took a look at my friends and my family. And I love them. Um, it almost makes me cry a little, but when I really think about, in some instances, the amount of time I was spending or with them or not spending with them, or the people that were important or are important to me in my life and connected, I realized that some of the people you know I really love the most, that maybe I saw them like four or five times a year. Yeah. And it just really solidified my yes. feelings yes. about really taking care of myself and becoming my most authentic and doing what I could, just mm -hmm. taking charge. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Listen, again, Coco keeps saying things that remind me, and, and I think, again, a little bit of uh, the opposite and, and equally, um, I think, relatable to is I had developed over the years a really strong practice of, of um, sitting, doing deep breathing, tapping, using all my tools. And one of the things that alerted, to me, alerted me to the fact that things were not right, things were not right in my life, was the fact that I was struggling with being able to sit. I could sit and I yearned for it and I would do it, but my uh, monkey mind or the mind chatter or the peace and stillness that I used to be able to experience in mind and body, um, I was really struggling at being able to do that as I was not changing my life. Mm -hmm. During the period I was resisting and I was not wanting to believe that some of the things that I had to let go of, I did have to let go of. Mm -hmm. And the ability then to be able to sit in silence and peace and and, and and, and, and calm was becoming almost blocked or less and less available to me and my thoughts were consumed with no just to knowing that you know it was time to time to do something mm -hmm. so it was almost the loss of my ability to practice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the way that I wanted in the way that I had known in the way that I believe in um, said uh oh we're getting we're getting in trouble here we, we, we need to do something mm -hmm. You know, um, when it got to the place and the point where I really knew it was time for me to actually take action, mm. um, I actually reached out to my family very thoughtfully um, 
including the timing of it all. You know, what was I going to say? When was I going to say it? And I have to say, it was very important to me to approach them in a way um, that basically said, you know, um, I asked for support. Mm -hmm. I asked them to please make it about me and not about them. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. That is such an incredibly key point, too, because when we're looking for a certain kind of support, and the kind of support that really nurtures us to become wholly who we are, we do need that support where there's the person or the container, the group, the circle, yes. holding us and saying, you know, this is about you now. This mm -hmm. is solely about you. Mm -hmm. You know, we're sitting here holding you so that you can determine, you know, what's right for you and what you need and where to go. And, um, and often you have to ask for that because that doesn't yeah. necessarily naturally come to, we, have, we haven't been taught that. We haven't taught that. Mm -hmm. We've been taught that way of living in the culture at large. Mm -hmm. So to be able to even ask for that on a small scale or any scale is really, you know, a bold move. And well done. Thank you. <laughs> well done. So true. Thank so you. True. <laughs>